I'm frequently asked how I do my own makeup and how long it takes me to do my makeup. So I thought I'd put together this short video for you to see what my normal makeup routine is, say, in the mornings. I've already cleansed my face using the Love Your Skin Cleansing Lotion because that's my favourite. A couple of times a week I use the wash, but that's when I'm in the shower um, and I'm washing my hair, and that means I'm exfoliating twice a week. But daily I use the cleansing lotion. So now, without any need for toning, I then go into treating my skin. And we're in the winter quarter now, so very much my two preferred serums are the brightening and clarifying and the smoothing and retexturizing. So I take a pump of each of those onto my hand, blend them together, and then I take that very quickly, just all over my face. I take it over my eye area as well. This serum is great for dark circles, fine lines and wrinkles, but also for really smoothing the texture of your skin. And because it's water-based, it goes into the skin really easily. So I need just a little bit more now, blend the two together. And then I'm delivering all of the ingredients for both to every part of my face. And the final bit down onto my neck, which as I constantly tell you, don't forget the neck. Okay, so that is followed by my moisturiser. Now the hydrogel moisturiser is on a pump that has already been measured for dispensing. So one pump will take you over half of your face. And yes, I even take it over my lashes and my eyes because it keeps them nice and supple and hydrated. Another pump for the other half of my face. Eyes, lashes, all over my forehead. And as you can see, there's no need to rub the moisturiser in. Just leave it on your skin, spread it out, leave it there, and it will soak in because it's a hydrogel. And if I didn't have my sweater on, I'd take this even further down so that I put some onto the decollete every day. All the areas that are very quick to show the signs of ageing. And then I'm ready for my makeup. I don't use primer or any flash balms because I find this leaves my skin perfectly ready for makeup. And I don't like that heavy, claggy feeling on my skin of layer after layer of product. So the first thing I then use is my foundation. And the purpose of my foundation is to make my skin look as naturally good as possible. I want a canvas that looks perfect. At the moment, I'm using, um, wait for the glasses, Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid Foundation and the colour I've chosen is nude. But what I find through the year is my skin colour and tone changes. So I take a pump and a little of that, but I continually hold in my drawer Clinique Up Lighting Liquid Illuminator in bronze, which during the year I either add more or less to my foundation just to slightly change the shade and give it more depth of pigment because sometimes I'm browner, sometimes I'm paler and I just want to slightly influence the foundation by adding in a little of that illuminator. And then I take the foundation and I use my fingers, I tend to prefer that to a brush, mainly because I may be a bit lazy about cleaning brushes, um, but I take that all over blending it out towards the hairline. You don't want a thick line around your hairline. So starting at the cheek level and taking it out and gently under the eye. You'll see that although I do have shadows under my eyes and shadows on my eyelids, I'm not a concealer user. I like to use my foundation to cover any blemishes or um, shadows because I find it doesn't leave a build up. So many concealers are quite heavy and they can make your skin look quite crepey once they're on. So I tend to stick with my foundation and I find this one is particularly good at giving me the coverage I need. I even have a slight area here with an age spot forming and this foundation even covers that. I don't need anything else. So over the nose, in around creases, you should always make sure you've got a good mirror and good daylight when you're doing your day makeup particularly because that's how others are going to see you. You want it to look good in natural light. And you can see I don't take extra foundation for my neck. What I'm doing is using my fingers just to blend that away so that there are no harsh lines around here. 
Then I take my foundation onto my eyelid. Now, some people don't do that and they go straight onto their eyelids with eyeshadows. And I've always found as a makeup artist that if you do that, you'll never get the color that the eyeshadow looks in the palette. You really need skin that looks perfectly neutral before you start to apply your eyeshadow. And once it's perfectly neutral, you'll get a good color result from the color you've chosen for your eyeshadow. Now, the reason I do the eyes now is it's giving the foundation under my eyes a little time to settle. Can you see now, again, with what's left on my fingers, I'm taking it up onto my forehead, so it's not too much blending it up into my hairline. Even though I have a fringe, just blend away. And then I'm going to turn my mirror now to the magnifier side because I do wear glasses normally and it's very easy to put too much on when your eyesight's not good and then you look very heavily made up. But now, with a little bit of foundation that I've got left on my hand, I start to look from a distance and see, do I see any shadows now? Where would I want to apply any correction? And I take that little bit of foundation that's left and I now start to pat it on the shadows under my eye and then just leave it there for it to dry and settle, covering any shadows. Because when I now look in the mirror, I should see what looks like a perfect canvas. And you should have also noticed that I take my foundation over my lips too. If I want to get a good lip colour, I find a foundation base gives me the best lip result. So that's my foundation on. Now, I don't go straight onto cheek colour and shading because I use powders and if I try to apply powder to foundation while it's still damp, it will go streaky. So I move straight onto my eyes now and I can start to almost set that foundation in place with my first level of eyeshadow. I want a softer brush because I'm going for my first shade which is almost a highlighting shade and this is a number 17. This is number 17 barely there three shades, only two of which I really use, which is the lighter white shade and a pale pink, which I'm gonna use on my eyelid. And you'll have noticed already that I use a variety of different makes. When I was creating Love Your Skin as a skincare range, that's been born out of me trying every skincare brand on the market to eventually put together what I feel are the perfect products for skincare. With my makeup, and I've yet to create a makeup range, I use the products that give me the best results. I'm not driven by brand, I'm not driven by price, I'm driven by the result I want. And for an eyeshadow, what I want is something that gives me a good finish, but not too shiny. On an older eyelid, you have to be really careful that you don't go too shiny. So, I take this whitish colour, just over the brow bone area, very likely, not too much, just as my upper lid colour, because it's a highlighter, it gives a brightness to the eye. Then I change into a brush that gives me more control, a more shaped brush, but still quite soft, and I take my pinkier colour now, and this is going to do the lid of my eyelid. Okay, so now I actually place this and make sure you keep it just to the lid. Be careful that you don't end up in this area here because that will make this fatty area look more bulbous. So keep it purely on the lid and just blend it away from the eyelashes up to that lighter colour you've just done on the brow bone so that they blend together nicely without any harsh lines. So a little of the powder on the lid, right the way over to the edge, keep it on the lid area and blend up to the upper colour. Very, very simply. Don't go too far out. It's good to have in mind an imaginary line from the corner of your mouth through the corner of your eye and your eyeshadow should stay within that line, unless you're very young, when you can afford to sweep eyeshadows out to the side. If you don't want to drag the eye down, keep your eyeshadow within that, that's, that area. It makes it much neater and gives an, a lift to the eye. Okay, the next thing is I want to do my eyebrows. And for that, I found this lovely 
little um, eyebrow pencil that has a brush on the end so I don't have to have a separate eyebrow brush. Um, this is a George from Asda eyebrow pencil and brow brush. Now I am fortunate in that I have very black eyebrows naturally as you can probably see. The first thing to do is to brush them into shape and to visualise the shape you want and where you've either got gaps or the colour isn't quite even because now I'm going to use the colour just with very small light strokes to start to create the perfect shape around my eye. Now if you've read any of my blogs you'll know that I'm a great fan of eyebrows but not these ridiculous ones that are being created at the moment. An eyebrow is a frame to your eye just the same as a photo frame is a frame to a picture and it's really important that the brows are groomed. If you've got naturally dark brows you won't have to do very much apart from um, tweezing them into shape or threading them or waxing them into shape and then just brushing them. But most of us need a little bit of help either from a pencil or a powder to add definition and colour and contour. But make sure again that it's light strokes, not too heavy, and that you don't go beyond that line, that imaginary line. Otherwise, if you draw the line too low, it will drag the illusion of the eye down and make your eyes look saggy. So that's eyebrows done quite quickly. Now I'm going to go back and add some eyeliner. Eyeliner on an older eyelid should definitely be softer. The youngsters can take very strong, firm, defined eyeliners like I used to do when I was at college in the 70s. But now I use a Maybelline eye gel, which is absolutely brilliant in brown. But I tend to add a little water to it, so it makes it a bit softer than just the gel. Take some onto a very thin brush. Now what I've done is I've bought an eyeliner brush and instead of pulling hairs out to make it finer, I've literally cut away with a pair of nail scissors so I end up with very, very few hairs. That makes it much easier for you to get a nice thin line. And what you're now going to do is take this and if you're worried about you're going to make a mess, you won't if you place the brush onto your lashes. You're not going on the eyelid first of all. You place it on your lashes and then gently move it back against the eyelid. So you're making the finest, finest line. I'm not even balancing because what I'm doing is I'm balancing on my lashes and just rolling this really thin brush just back against my eyelid. So I create a thin line. And that will give definition and contour to the shape of your eye. You don't need to wing it out at the sides. Just take it along the natural eye line and very lightly down towards the inner corner of the eye. And it will give contour to the eye, which now you should be able to see between the two eyes. This one looks quite soft and powdery, and this one begins to have more definition. So same on the other eye now. And not so easy, you think, when you're going in the other direction. Make sure you have your magnifier up side of the mirror up. Rest on the lashes and take it back against the eyelid from the outside corner all the way along and down in towards the inner corner. Then what I do is I very quickly rub the excess off the brush and then just go back over it to soften it because that means you have no hard lines. And you can do that quite easily freehand and it makes it a little bit more smudgy and a little softer. So that's almost eye makeup done because what I don't do is I don't put my contour on until I've almost completed my makeup. So the next thing I'm going to do is the thing we've missed out on my face, which is contour and blusher. Now the first thing I'm going to use to give me shape and contour is a Bobbi Brown. This is a lovely product. It's their, sorry, guy, glasses again. This is their Shimmer Brick Compact in the bronze. And I don't use very much of this, but I use it on quite a big brush, tap off the excess, and then I take that I'll just gently along the contour here and if you can see it starts to create a bit of a shadow. This is not so much for colour, it's for shaping. So I take it underneath slightly where I'm going to put colour on. That simple, no more than that. Then I'm moving on to a pink George from Asda blusher. 
with quite a big blushy brush again tap your excess off and add some color to the apples of your cheek to give you a warmth that makes you look more natural but you can see again I do almost a circular mo movement over that because it gives softness rather than harsh lines we're supposed to be creating a naturally good look rather than something too made up okay so that's contour and color done right back to eyes now I use a cold pencil to define the lower lid and I take that just along the inside edge of my lashes like so not all the way into the corner just where the main lashes are and then I'm ready for mascara the mascara I'm using is a max factor um, 2000 calorie I don't know whether that's a really good idea I'm only supposed to be on 2000 calories a day but here we go mascara with your large reflective mirror and from the base of your lashes upwards and remember you want them to look like they are false lashes and you know what they look like in a packet so this is about not only applying the color but positioning your lashes so spread them out keep them as individual as possible and what I like is to fan outwards to this outer corner now I've just got a little bit of a mascara on my um, eye skin there so I'm going to need a cotton bud in just a minute and then I can take that off okay the same on the lower lashes I take the mascara you see I've not gone for extra mascara from the actual applicator I've literally gone with what I've already got on the brush along my lower lashes and concentrating on the outside edge to give a very almond shape to the eye then on this side again let's take some more for this eye and in we go right your mascara upwards from the roots spreading out all the way along again very typically I've gone and got myself some mascara on my skin but it comes off very easily with a cotton bud which I'm going to get and show you in just a minute and then the lower lashes okay then it's lips because I'm going to let that mascara dry okay lip color I'm always determined to put lip primer on first because my lips especially in the winter months get incredibly dry and I hate cracky bitty lips now this is the Elizabeth Arden 8 hour one and it's my desert island product I would never ever be without this that goes on first I do like a lip liner because it holds the shape of your lip color so I take this is a rimmel just to give some definition and a lip line can be really helpful if you've got uneven lips because it helps you balance out the shape then I go for lip color and this is Bobbi Brown on a little lip brush that I've kept from another brand and I add the colour in blending it just inside the lip liner so that the lip liner doesn't show but it holds the lip colour in place and that was followed with a Barry M lip gloss Finally, I go in with my contour eyeshadow. Now this is just to give shape. And this, again, another favorite of mine, Bobbi Brown in a gray. And you'd either add more or less of this in the evening. Evening would be that bit more than daytime. And I just add a little contour on the corners to give shape and definition to my eyes. Like so. Wow, I think I've even covered my bits of mascara. And just soften them with a little brush so that it's not too hard and there we are a day makeup completed in next to no time you saw the before this is the after <laughs>